Hey guys, it's Kelly, welcome back. So in a recent video, I was talking about makeup products and I meant, well obviously I was talking about makeup products, that's most of what we discuss on this channel, but I mentioned that there was a certain product that I was willing to splurge on and then another category that I wasn't. And a lot of you guys requested that I do a video talking about that and sharing which makeup items I think are worth the splurge and which ones I try to find on a budget. So I thought that would be fun to share today. I did film this makeup look, but I don't know if you're ever gonna see it because I wasn't feeling the look, so I'm not sure if that footage is gonna go up or not, we'll see. But I did a full face of five star products from Sephora. If that video is up, I'll leave it linked down below. But this look is way different from the look you saw in that video. I changed the lip, wasn't feeling it. I took the liner off my lower lash line. I always think you know, today I'm gonna try a smoky lower lash line and then I never like it. And I still wasn't feeling the look, so I tried to save it by switching up my outfit, switching up my hair to whatever this giant headband is, and here we are. So if that look does get posted, I will leave it linked down below, but I don't know if that footage is gonna make the cut. But I went ahead and picked out four products from each category. Four that I am willing to splurge on and four that I try to find on a budget. Now, neither of these are absolute. Like, of course, sometimes I'm going to splurge on something and sometimes I'm going to spend high end. But probably 90% of the time, this is where I fall. All right, starting with something I'm willing to splurge on highlighters i feel like highlighters are worth the splurge now i feel like a lot of powder products just kind of are worth it because they tend to take longer to use up now this is going to vary for everyone maybe you go through highlighters and blushes very quickly or maybe you never hit pan on anything like this is all going to come down to our own personal preference and collection but for me i have yet to use up an entire powder highlighter i've hit pan on three or four of them now, but I've never actually finished one up. So for me, that definitely justifies the price tag. I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck. I'm getting a lot of value and not 100% of the time, but a lot of the time I feel like there are better highlighter formulas in that higher end range. Let me just say though, these days I feel like the gap between drugstore and high end is shrinking a lot and you can really find high quality products in every category at an affordable price tag. So I don't think there's anything that you need to splurge on, like you will never find a good option at the drugstore. No, I don't think that's the truth. But most of the time, I tend to prefer my high-end highlighter formulas. I feel like they tend to be a little bit more creamy, a little bit less glittery. That being said, I love my Essence highlighter palette. My Koki highlighter palette is so good. The e.l.f. baked highlighters I enjoy. So there are definitely good drugstore options, but I'm willing to splurge on highlighter. I feel like that's an investment that's gonna be worth it for me. One that I don't really splurge on, surprisingly, kind of the opposite of what I just said. I know I just said, you know, for powder products, I don't mind the splurge, but I use up bronzers. I have used up a good amount of bronzers in my lifetime. I tend to hit pan and use up most of my bronzers. I don't know, maybe I just use too much bronzer, but I use these up. So for me, and okay, here's the difference. There's a lot of good drugstore bronzers and even high-end these days, I feel like there aren't even that many high-end bronzers that I can think about. I mean, Too Faced has good ones. Becca's got some good ones. One that I'm holding in my hand is actually a mid-range one, we'll call it. This is from The Balm, but I bought this when they were doing their 50% off sale because I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think you need to spend that much on bronzer. You can buy this $6 bronzer from e.l.f. and it's gonna perform just as well as the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer, in my opinion. The Milani bronzer, 10 out of 10. The Essence bronzer palette, so good. You, you can find it, there's plenty of bronzer options. But worth the splurge, I'm gonna say eyeshadow palettes. Now I do think you can find eyeshadow palettes on a budget and there are a lot of great drugstore palettes. I actually just did a video about this. I will leave that link down below if you have not seen it. I share a ton of affordable palette recommendations, all of which are great. But for me, not only do I feel like high-end shadows tend to be a little bit more consistent, whereas drugstore shadows, they're a little bit hit and miss. Um, sometimes you get a great formula, sometimes they're chalky and powdery. And also, this one is a little bit petty, but you know what, you guys? It is the truth. Sometimes with my makeup, I just like the experience of it, and I feel like a high-end palette delivers a different experience. Now, yes, at the end of the day, performance is number one, but when I'm sitting here 
playing around with my beautiful sultry palette like that's an experience that I enjoy and I do think there's something to be said about luxury and high-end products and packaging for contributing to that overall experience now personally I don't spend luxury prices on eyeshadow palettes if you watched my eyeshadow palette tag video I mentioned that the most expensive palettes in my collection are $49 I have a couple at that price tag but I'm not willing to splurge to like $129, like the huge Natasha Denona palettes. I'm definitely not buying her $200 palettes. But for me, kind of these mid-range to high-end palettes, I find deliver really high quality, a nice variety in shades, beautiful color stories, and they kind of, they just feel luxurious. I enjoy applying my makeup a little bit more when I like the packaging and I like the look, okay? It's petty, I know it is. I even did a whole video series, well, it was a two-part series, about makeup packaging where I talked about packaging I love and packaging that I hate because for me, just that overall experience contributes to my appreciation of a product. So the three that I'm holding, none that pricey. I mean, this is 45, Anastasia Sultry. A newer favorite for me, the Glitch. Just 29, not like crazy expensive, but definitely not drugstore. And then the palette I'm wearing today is Natasha Denona Mini Retro. This is 25, so it's not a huge splurge in terms of the cost, but when you think about how small this is for 25, it's definitely a higher end value there. Higher end value, does that make sense? You know what I'm saying. Also, I wanted to share my new favorite coffee drink. <laughs> I'm calling this a coconut milk latte, but to call it a latte is a bit of a stretch. I do not have an espresso maker. But I'm using a little bit of instant coffee and a touch of water to act as our espresso. Some days I add sugar, just a little bit of it, and cinnamon, and then coconut milk. Today, I was almost out of coconut milk, so I did half coconut, half almond. I love it. I also love coconut milk, though. I won't splurge on an eyebrow pencil. I'm not going to say I never have, <laughs> but now that I feel like I've tried enough, at the end of the day, a drugstore eyeshadow palette, not eyeshadow palette, what? A drugstore eye brow pencil will get the job done and you can find dupes out there my favorite is my elf one this is empty i don't know why i'm holding on to this i think i just save it because i mention it so often in videos but this is their ultra precise brow pencil love my koki brow products the essence brow gel so good the koki brow gels even though i love the anastasia brow wiz and the brow definer those are great and if they were on sale all the time, I would not mind having them in my collection all the time. But knowing that I can find drugstore alternatives that are almost exact dupes, I don't really splurge too much on my brow pencils anymore. I will splurge on blush though. I was gonna say that I feel like the drugstore doesn't have the best blushes, but these days I don't really think drugstore or high-end has a ton of blushes, but they're coming. I keep saying it, 2020 is gonna be the year of blushes. We're gonna get all these blush releases. I'm predicting it. So maybe if I did this video again next year, I might tell you, you know, the drugstore's got a ton of great blushes. And while I love a few, my Milani blush, the Powder Rose blush, so good. A great dupe for the Tarte Amazonian clay blushes. Even with that, with some liquid drugstore br blushes that I love. Why was that so hard to say? I still think high-end blushes are where it's at. And you know what? Recently, I used up my first ever blush and it was a mini and it took me like two years to use it up. So for me, I can really justify the purchase of a high-end blush. This is not something I'm going to use up in a month the way I might a brow pencil. Also, sometimes I'll buy high-end minis like my Hourglass Mini Blush. That's the one I'm wearing today. The three that I'm holding, these two are discontinued or being discontinued, which, which bums me out. This is the Urban Decay 8-Hour Blush in Indecent. This is amazing. Too Faced Love Flush Blush and I Will Always Love You. And this one is new. This is one of my newest, this is my newest blush and a huge favorite of mine. This is the Samantha March and Ofra Chick Lit Blush. I just, I like my high-end blushes. Lip liners. I don't have any high-end lip liners in my collection. <laughs> I did for a while. I did have one from Ofra. I did have one from Kat Von D back before everything. But I don't think I've ever had any other high-end lip liners. And I there's a reason for that. These Koki lip liners are $6. They're the best out there. The NYX retractable lip liners are right around $4 to $5 also very good and again lip liners are products that i do use up like this one where's my warm nude right here i have the tiniest little bit left do you see that that is all that i have left on this and i did not intentionally pan this this wasn't something i was actively trying to use up i just 
use it so often and it's a retractable formula so those tend to go faster as well than like a pencil lip liner does so for that reason i'm not going to spend 20 dollars and up on a lip liner when these six dollar ones are just as good i will splurge on brushes and i think brushes make a good investment now i do have drugstore brushes that i enjoy i think elf makes good brushes the new profusion brushes are really impressing me the aoa brushes that are a dollar are quite good as well so if you are on a budget and you absolutely cannot afford to invest in high-end brushes I don't think you're going to be disappointed, but for me, I think that they're worth the investment. So to compare, my Sigma brushes I've used for years, I've washed dozens of times, and they look the exact same. The only thing is a couple of my like most used ones are starting to have the writing wear off. So that's a little bit of a bummer just because I film videos, so I like to know which brush I'm using. But for the average person, probably not a big deal. But to compare, my e.l.f. brushes, which I do love, I feel like the barrel starts to fall off. Almost all of my e.l.f. brushes, this has happened to. So this is the foundation brush, and it's just kind of wiggly. It's not the end of the world, and you know, if it does pop out, I can glue it back in. The actual performance of the brush is fine, but I think if there is a category of your collection that is worth investing in, it's brushes. And that will segue us into the last one that I don't think is worth it. Ironically, I just said brushes were, but sponges, I don't think they are. For me, like the max that I will spend on a sponge is about $12, and that is on the high end. I would like my sponge to be below 10, maybe even like five or less, because you need to replace these somewhat frequently. Sometimes I see people with sponges that are probably growing mold on the inside. I'm just kidding, maybe I'm not, but sometimes you see some really tragic looking sponges, and this one needs to be washed. I've I used it today, but I try not to let my sponges get to that point. You want to make sure that your tools are clean and sponges do need to be replaced on a regular basis. So for that reason, I'm not going to spend $20 on a beauty blender multiple times throughout the year. I just, I can't get myself to do it. If it was a thing where you would buy one beauty blender and it lasted forever, they never had to be replaced. Sure, fine. But when you're buying them consistently, that's not going to happen. So the one I'm holding right now is a higher end sponge. This is the Ofra Perfecting Puff. This is a replacement one that they sent me, but I bought the first one that I ever tried, I bought myself. Now these are $15, but you can always use an affiliate code and that gets you 25% off. So they're right around $12 actually, which like I said, that's about my cap. Also the $1.55 sponge from AOA. Hello, so good or the Real Technique sponge is great as well. You just, you won't find me buying a beauty blender. It's not gonna happen. Not when there's so many alternatives, you know? But that's gonna go ahead and complete today's video. If you are new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. And if I did end up posting this makeup tutorial, I'll pop it on the screen right here. In case I did not, there will be another video here for your viewing pleasure, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.